and now Reverend Angela. Good morning. So this is one of my favorite parts of the service where we can join together in sacred meditative prayer. So as I begin to adjust the music, I invite you to begin focusing in on your breath and getting comfortable right where you are. And as you begin to relax your body, allow your breath to grow deep and slow. Being consciously aware of the precious breath of your being. Sensing the warmth of each inhalation. And the peace of each exhalation. And let us celebrate and savor our inhalation and exhalation as the reminder that we live in the universal flow of giving and receiving. I am the receiver of the vital life force energy. I move and breathe and have my beingness in the field of pure potential. The living, loving presence of God, the mysterious, palpable breath of creation. And so as I am the receiver of life, let me go forth this day as the animating presence of life, of love, of wisdom, of faith in the benevolence of the universal flow of God of all of creation. And so let us center ourselves in the prayer of loving kindness. I breathe into my body. bringing exquisite attention to those areas that call for my tender loving care. And I sense grace and ease as every muscle relaxes. And with reverence, I 
pray for myself. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be free from all inner and outer suffering. May I be well in body, mind, emotion, and spirit. And oh, may I be at peace and ease and be filled with the joy of my being. I invite you to call to mind a dear one or dear ones, an individual or individuals in your life that you feel called to share the prayer of loving kindness to. Sense them alive within your heart as you breathe fully from that deep well of love, as you affirm these words, may you be filled with living, loving kindness. May you be free from all pain and suffering. And may you be well in body, mind, emotion, and spirit. May you be at peace, at ease, and be filled with the joy of your being. as you allow the expansiveness of divine love to open you as it radiates out beyond your resonant field. Let us hold all those on Unity by the Shores prayer list and living loving prayer as we extend to them loving kindness. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be free from all inner and outer suffering. May you be well in body, mind, emotion, and spirit. May you be at peace at ease and be filled with the joy of your being. And so let us rest in the stillness, knowing that we are both the giver and the receiver of loving kindness as we rest in the stillness.
I bring my awareness back to the inhalation and exhalation of my breath, to the knowing that that ebb and flow of life is the beauty and bounty of giving and receiving. And so this day, this moment, let me be a conscious, open-hearted and benevolent giver and receiver of life, love, wisdom, and beauty. Let us take a deep breath in and out. Rub both of your hands on the top of your legs, sensing the chair, the bed, the recliner beneath you, stretching your arms out in the master powerful pose, claiming the I am that you are. And when you are ready, slowly open your eyes, beloved. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me, and I'm so grateful. 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 I'm gratitude before me. Gratitude behind me. Gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me, and I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, 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 gratitude within. Good morning, and I am just going to take a moment to fix my screen. I'm having some computer difficulties, so I apologize. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Good morning, and welcome to our service this morning. I am excited to be with you all as we journey through the law of giving and receiving. And I would like to start us off by sharing a parable entitled The Two Seas that was written by Rabbi Julie Hilton Dannon. 
There is an old parable about two seas in Israel, one fresh and one very salty. One, the Sea of Galilee, is a freshwater lake that teems with fish and is ringed by rich farmland, as you can see it on the left on the screen. The second on the right, the Dead Sea, is 10 times saltier than the ocean. It is so salty that only bacteria and microbial fungi can survive in its waters. It is ringed with salt formations and is surrounded by barren desert. An old legend explains that both of these seas, which are actually lakes, receive their water from the Jordan River. The Sea of Galilee is vibrant and alive, while the Dead Sea, at its lowest altitude on planet Earth, has no outlet for its water. The Sea of Galilee flows outward into the Jordan River, contributing some water from local springs as well, while the Dead Sea can only receive and does not flow outward. The Musser, Jewish ethical teaching to be derived is that those who give flourish, while those who keep everything for themselves dry up and wither. By giving to others, we actually keep ourselves flowing and growing. So far, a beautiful reminder that giving and sharing bring vitality into our lives. But I don't think the story should end there. This legend, lovely as it is, reinforces the idea that giving is good, but receiving is inherently selfish. Such an understanding is too simplistic and even dangerous. A few years ago, when my husband was hospitalized after a serious stroke, dozens of human angels, mostly from our family and synagogue, surrounded us with the support of love and with kindness and with good deeds of all kinds. At the inpatient rehab that my husband was being cared for, I saw many patients sitting by themselves at mealtime, while my husband had homemade food at each meal and a large group of caring people from our Jewish community supporting us at every turn. Our family and friends were giving and I am sure that the flow of their giving increased their own sense of vitality and connection. One who by nature and profession is a giver can find it desperately hard to change roles and receive from others and even harder to ask for help. My daughter cautioned me that if I refused to receive help at that time, I would be stopping the cycle of giving and preventing others from doing good. Indeed, Kabbalah, the Jewish mystical tradition, teaches that the universe exists only because of the interplay of giving and receiving. By giving, we receive by receiving appropriately with an open and gracious heart, we give. It really doesn't matter which side of the equation we are on. The mitzvah or good deed can only happen if one person is ready to give and the other ready to receive. In fact, the very word Kabbalah means receiving. After Abraham's stroke, 
I read an insightful book by the spiritual teacher Ram Das. Ram Das himself suffered a massive stroke years ago. He too was a giver, always asking how he could serve others and not how they could give to him. But as he healed, Ram Das discovered that the role of receiver is just as important as of that of the giver because it enables another person to give and thus allows the flow to continue. Ram Das wrote, when we look at incarnation from the soul view, we see that our human interactions aren't just about caregiving or care receiving, they're about mirroring each other's heart. Very beautiful parable. And as we can see from the parable of the two seas, we may be reminded and inspired to be gracious givers and to be conscious of how we are giving in our lives, from what place in consciousness do we flow, so to speak. And also, as we listen to um, Rabbi Julie's story, along with hearing the Kabbalah's mystical teaching about giving and receiving, and the story of Ram Das, we are also reminded how equally important it is to not just be an open-hearted and gracious giver, but to be that open-hearted and gracious receiver as well. Some of us do better with the giving side and some of us do better with the receiving side, but nevertheless, we are reminded they are both equally important as we flow in life, as we find out that they are actually one in the same. In the book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, Deepak Chopra's second law, the law of giving and receiving, aligns so beautifully with the Kabbalah's teaching. And that, again, that I shared in the story is this. The universe exists only because of the interplay of giving and receiving. By giving, we receive. By receiving appropriately, we give. It doesn't really matter which side of the equation we are on. Now, the law as delineated in the seven spiritual laws of success, the law of giving and receiving, can really be broken down and explored by looking at two aspects of this law. Now, the first is dynamic exchange, and the other is intentional giving. So let us look at what is dynamic exchange. Well, the universe operates through a dynamic exchange of flow, ebbing and flowing, giving and receiving which are two different aspects of the flow of energy in the universe. And we come to realize that this flow, this life force, the field of pure potential, which we spoke about yesterday, AKA infinite potential, AKA God, source of creation, life force, is always in motion. It seeks to evolve to create, to extend itself. So it can never be static and neither can we. And everything in this field is connected and interacts. That is the teaching, what is in one is in the whole, what is in the whole is in one. And so we find in our spiritual teachings that consciousness is the currency through which we give and receive. And the word currency, we can think of as money, but currency actually means flow. So let us take a look again and remind ourselves what is consciousness? Consciousness is 
what we animate, what we hold, what we give life to in our thoughts, in our beliefs, our emotions, the words we energize and animate into expression and the actions that we take in our lives. And so it is this conscious currency, the animation of our thoughts, emotions, and words and actions that radiate not only in our own beingness and affect our lives, our health, our emotions, our state of awareness, but they also radiate out into the field because we are vibrational beings. Everything that is in expression in life carries vibration, therefore is a creator of energy of that which it sends out to the field. And so what we radiate out through our consciousness is sent out. What is in one is in the whole and what is in the whole is in the one. And so what happens is the field mirrors back. So what we are operating in is what we are receiving, what we are energizing, thereby it is one in the same, what we are receiving. Now, a lot of times when we look at the word mirror, some people will say, well, you know, today I, you know, I was like, so many angry drivers were on the road and I, I you know, I, I don't know, like, it was like, is there something going on? Is there a full moon? Like, is it crazy out there? And then it's like, well, you know, that mirroring, like, I don't think I'm an angry person. So it may not be like the tit for tat, but what is being mirrored that is that something energetic, gener, gener, energetically within you in thought, in conscious emotion, and um, in action, in word is desiring to be brought back into wholeness. So whatever this that is being mirrored is the receiving of, oh my gosh, this is a call for me to go within and see what this is about, to see what this is that is wanting to be healed within me. So I am receiver of that gift, if we can look at it, that, at it this way. Matthew Kahn says, everything is here to help us. Sometimes when the energy and the vibration of something like dis-ease or anger comes at us or is the experience that we are in, we don't always like say, oh good, this is here to help me. But if we take that deep breath and know that as I center myself in consciousness into that place of being willing to be open to that flow. So whatever I am experiencing, I happen to be with someone, I was a passenger in the car who was finding it to, well, anyway, let's just say we're, was being in, taking personally the drivers on the road. And I could feel myself like taking it personally and like wanting to give this person a lecture about how they should be, what they send out. And I'm like, hello, you're standing in judgment right now. <laughs> let's not worry about the person that is next to you. Like, let's work. And then this word came up, be the antidote. Be the giver, the antidote of that which you seek. So, which brings us to the second part of the law of um, giving and receiving is to give that which we seek be the antidote to that which we are desiring or, or experiencing in our lives. And so that is what I call intentional giving. And Deepak Chopra says, through your willingness to give that which you seek, it is that how we keep the abundance of the universe circulating in our lives. So if we are desiring love in our lives, how can we show up as a loving presence to others, to all those that we come in contact with? If we are seeking to be seen and heard, how are you showing up to be that presence who holds sacred space and does deep listening and creates 
a space of empathy and expression. If we are desiring more material abundance in our lives, we show up as that generous giver of that which we desire. And it is maybe helping somebody obtain, find a job, obtain material success in their own life. This learn to give that which you seek is also something that was taught by the master teacher, Jesus. And it appears in Luke chapter six, verse 38. Give and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is probably um, one of a common scripture passage that uh, many are familiar with, especially if you have taken a prosperity class of any kind. And so what it's been typ typically used to refer to when we see measure you get back is literally like measure meaning the amount of money or material goods. When we take it from that physical, literal sense, many times it has been interpreted to that. The amount of money I get back, the amount that I, if I tithe 10% and give this amount, then I will ten, be re, receive tenfold abundance of money in my life. And I'm not saying that that is not part of it because giving, whether it's money or anything else, is that flow. But what Jesus was really referring to when he said the measure, right, is consciousness, the measure of consciousness, excuse me. The measure of our consciousness, meaning the vibrational field of our, what we are holding in that field. And what he was talking was about was to give from the consciousness of benevolence. We explored benevolence, unlimited benevolence when we looked at living originally that series. And so benevolence means I align myself to be a giver from this consciousness of appreciation, from the consciousness of kindness, from the consciousness of desiring to be the generous giver that I am. And when we are giving from that place, it's not like, well, I gave here, I tithe 10% here, so I should be getting X amount of money here, or I threw a birthday bash for my spouse's 30th birthday, boy, you know, my birthday's coming up. He better give me a good party too. It is not that. It's not the tip for tat. When we are giving from the measure of benevolence and consciousness, it is giving for the sake of giving. Let us take a deep breath. And just reflect over the last maybe just the morning. And if you haven't been up too long before this service started, maybe reflect on maybe yesterday. From what space have you been a giver of life or a receiver of life, of the flow? Have you been showing up more like the salty Dead Sea or the benevolent teeming Sea of Galilee. And so we have this opportunity to bring this law of giving in and receiving into practice into our lives. And so Deepak Chopra invites us into this. There are three steps to this practice. One, wherever I go and who, whomever I encounter, I will bring them a gift. The gift may be a compliment, a flower, or a prayer. Today I will give something to everyone I come in contact with. 
And so I will begin the process by circulating joy, wealth, affluence in my life, in the lives of others. And so when we give something to everyone, it can just be we're in the car, we pull up to somebody and we just take that moment to breathe them into our hearts and offer them a prayer. It could be the offering of a hello or a smile. So many times I am, um, you know, I used to take it personally, but no more. But, you know, when I go on my daily walks, you know, I say hello to pretty much everybody I pass. And I live in an area where it's, there's nice woods behind me and, and, and it's just a lovely area. And there's always people walking all times of the day. And so I, you know, I many times say, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, to be met with silence. And so I don't need to make a story about that, but it's about me being in the flow when make a story when, you know, they don't answer. It's about me being in that flow of giving and receiving. And today I will gratefully receive all the gifts that life has to offer me. I will receive the gifts of nature, of sunlight, the sound of birds singing, taking that time to relish the very beauty of it all in my heart, spring showers or the first snow of winter. I will also be open to receiving from others, whether it be in the form of material gift money, a compliment, or a prayer. You know, I did some reflecting on this receiving. You know, it is something that I, um, you know, when I had my surgery, really um, opened myself up in a big way as this community was so beautifully um, gracious in their giving in so many ways to me. And I also look, as I have bared witness to people in, the, in their later stages of life, like my mom, and um, so much suffering that is happening for her. Yes, she's grieving the loss of my dad. Yes, she has some physical ailments, but a big part of her suffering is around receiving. You know, all through her life, you know, the family was everything, doting on people, cleaning the house, cooking the meals. And then her whole world was, you know, doing this and, 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 and giving that way to my dad. And now as she is left alone and, you know, we have been caretaking her, my brothers and I, she finds, you know, she is just filled with speech, which I have shared, I am a burden, I'm burden, I'm being so hard on you, um, you know, and it all goes back to that receivership. So I just wonder, you know, how the universe is so, our lives are so like perfectly divine and synchronistic. And sometimes we find it hard to judge beyond appearances, but what if also our later stages of life is also for us to practice the deepening of receiving. And so many times we think, oh my gosh, I can't drive, I can't see. Now I don't know what that is all about. So I am not saying I am an expert here, but I am really, as I dig deep into this with my mom, am seeing that as she finds it difficult to be that receiver, as she needs help now, that it is creating sickness for her. And then three, I will make a commitment to keep wealth circulating in my life by giving and receiving life's most precious gifts, the gifts of caring, affection, appreciation, and love. Each time I meet someone, I will silently wish them happiness, joy, and laughter. And so I invite Matt to put in the chat box, like we did last week, the copy of the practice of the law of giving and receiving, if you so choose to practice that this week. And um, I'd like to close with a poem that was written by 
Cahill Chabron, and it is giving and receiving. And this beautiful photo is the beautiful gift that I received from Matt Denton. It is one of his pieces of arts. And so just take a moment. Well, you can reflect at the flower or close your eyes. Go to your fields and your gardens and you shall learn that it is the pleasure of the bee to gather honey of the flower. But it is also the pleasure of the flower to yield its honey to the bee. For the bee, a flower is a fountain of life and to the flower, a bee is a messenger of love. And to both bee and flower, the giving and the receiving of pleasure is a need and an ecstasy. Namaste, my dear ones. Have a blessed week. And may you be a gracious giver and receiver.